So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do part two about singles again. So I'm going to do part two about singles again. So there was, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of gold that I missed out last time, actually. So I'm sorry about that. But I was surprised that I missed out some important things. So I don't want people to get discouraged trying to find someone to marry or a lover in their life. And there was a really an important thing that I forgot. So turn to John 16, please. John chapter 16. All right, so let's lighten the pastor's mood now a bit, all right? He's gotten a little angry, so now he's going to lighten the mood a bit here. <laughs> all right, so let's look at John, and we're going to look at chapter 16. Now, you know why that you have not found the woman that you wanted or the man that you wanted in your life? The most simple answer is it's because you did not even pray, you got to understand. All right, now look at John chapter 16, verse 24. All right, so the first thing that you've got to be doing is you've got to pray. You've got to pray. So look at John chapter 16, and then we'll read verse 24. Notice what the Word of God says. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your what? Joy may be full. All right, so if you want to be happy in finding the person that you want to marry, then you've got to pray for it. All right, you've got to pray for him or her. The reason why you haven't gotten him or her or the special person is you didn't pray for it yet. Well, it's selfish of me, Pastor, and stuff like, okay, if you think it's selfish, then don't pray for it and don't complain to God if you think you love her. All right? Oh, don't worry. The Lord will show you if you're selfish. Just think about it. Why would you want the lover then? It's because there's something you really need then maybe, right? It shows more of a need. Don't you think that God understands that when he created Adam and Eve? What did he say? It is not good for man to be alone. What did Paul say? Paul, he recommended a single life, but he even realized it is better to marry than to burn. God knows that it's human nature to seek, to seek a special someone, see? The Lord understands that, so it's taking through prayer. But here's another problem, go to James. God's not answering your prayer though. You prayed for the special someone, but God didn't answer your prayer. You might say, why is that, Pastor? So this is where you get flashy, see? fleshy. So I'm going to show you two things right here, okay? I'm going to show you two things right here that's going to be helpful. The first thing is the book of James, chapter 4, and then we'll look at verse 3. James chapter 4, verse 3. Okay, so here's the key right here. So you are being fleshy because there's something right here. So you're going to have to amend your prayer. Look at James chapter 4, verse 3. Ye ask and receive not. Remember what Jesus says, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. There's a limitation. Verse 3. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may what? Consume it upon your lust. So there's a difference with lust and needs. Well, how will I know that, Pastor? Oh, trust me, the Lord will show you. That's why it's so important that you got to mature up yourself real quick. Unless the Lord's going to have to show you. And when the Lord shows you, it's sometimes take a long time because you're just stubborn in your flesh. You have your ideal mate that you want so badly, and the Lord said, that's not what I want you to have in my child. And because of that, you keep praying and praying, and God never gave it to you. And you got to open your eyes, and you got to say, maybe I just set my standards too high. Maybe I'm being too nitpicky right here. Maybe I'm not praying for the lover that would glorify God rather than pleasing my lust of my flesh. See, when you want a lover in your life, you got to think about this. This can never go wrong. What can never go wrong is when you think about getting the lover that can glorify God and make, make you happy to glorify God even more. Then maybe the Lord can work out a miracle where he can send you that lover. Repair a relationship. Struggling with the divorce and get it back together is that if you focus on his glory, not on what makes you your lust. See? All right, look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Oh, man, I didn't hear an amen on that one. I must have put a wet towel on this one right here. I must have put a wet towel right here. Look at James chapter 1. Oh, yeah, Pastor, amen. I'm going to get me... I'm, I'm going to get me a supermodel, and her first name is going to be King James, you know? <laughs> look at James chapter 1. Look at James chapter 1. You know what's another thing? This is very important, and I learned this. 
And when I did this, it transformed my life completely. James chapter 1, and we'll read verse 6. But let him ask, remember, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Let him ask in what? Faith, nothing wavering. For he that waveth, uh, wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall what? Receive anything of the Lord. See, you don't have faith. You know why God didn't bless you with that person yet? You lack faith. If you have faith, do you know how much peace your life will be in finding the special person? I have so much faith in God that whatever He does, whether I'm single all my life or whether I find the special person all my life, etc., I have so much faith that God, He'll take care and give me what's the best and what's better for me. And if you had that in mind, you will be at peace when you, uh, when you ask God for someone special in your life. You did not surrender that to the Lord. And a lack of surrender is a lack of peace. You surrender more, you gain more peace. So in prayer, you've got to have faith, and then you've got to also do it according to the glory of God. And when I did that, I noticed the Lord answered my prayers even better after that. The Lord sent me this uh, special someone after that. It works like that, but until you completely learn this lesson. So you better learn this lesson now rather than later. All right, another thing you got to understand is Philippians chapter 4. All right, Philippians chapter 4. You know what's essential to have a successful relationship is that you need confidence. So I forgot to mention that one, but that's really important in a relationship. Even secularly speaking, secularly speaking, it is important that if you're going to get the person to be attracted to you, you've got to have confidence. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. You've got to be really smooth. You've got to uh, make it natural. If you do that, then you'd be surprised how much you can get the person after that. So, you know, there were times, you know, like, you know, with the few that I dated a long time ago, you know, I would say one, one of them, you know, that, you know, if this is not going to work out, you know, don't worry about that. Don't feel bad about saying it. But just make sure that you tell me that I am, that I was very handsome, that I was funny, and that I was smooth, and that I was very smart, and you enjoyed a great time. And then see, it, it became more smooth that way. It became more, I, I noticed it worked more. It, it connected the bond even more, kind of kept them a little more. But see, that's the thing, is that you don't do it in a panic-scared mode. That just motivates a person not to get attracted to you. It's that confidence where you're comfortable that you don't care. All right? Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which what? Strengthens me. If you think about God, that's what I do. When I'm in a relationship, I think about God. And I say, I know that God is going to give me that person. And if it's not His will, He's not going to give me that person. That's what makes me comfortable in talking to the person. Because I'm not afraid of losing the person, see? So, or getting the wrong person if I get one. Because I know that God's in control. He'll give me the right one. See, so you've got to have confidence. If you're that much afraid of losing the person, see, what happens? Then you don't have that confidence to maintain it, to keep it together. All right, let's also uh, look at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. And then we're going to look at verses 8 through 9. Verses 8 through 9. So you got to be confident. So I mean, I know Donald Trump, he's a fornicator and he's such a horrible example. I don't know how he can get a woman like Melania, but you know, if you read his life story, you know how he got, he got her? He was smooth, even if by rejection. And if you read the details of his life, I think something like, uh, I forgot how it went, but basically she rejected his phone number, something like that. So instead, he switched to a different card and hit her a different phone number to contact him. He came up with some clever idea, very smooth, confident. You know, when you watch Trump, he seems like that he owns all the world and he's very arrogant. But you see, because of that attitude, see, he somehow won the affection of somebody out there. So you see, uh, even a horrible example like him, 
he was able to win something because of this. But see, you're not selfish and arrogant like Trump or anybody. You got Jesus Christ. So because you got Jesus Christ, you can end it out smooth and you can win the person's affection smoothly. Because you know God's in control and whatever turns out, if it blows up at the end, hey, God's in control. And guess what? Blow it up with confidence. Blow it up with a bang. There you go. There you go. Blow it up with a bang, you know? Yeah. Hey, okay, dump me, hit me. So what, you know? <laughs> On to the next person, all right? The world is vast, you know? Eight billion people, all right? All right, Joshua chapter 1. And then we'll read verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now, this is one of the favorite verses in my life, and this was actually Dr. Upman's favorite verse, and he wrote this in all the verses on the men's Bible. Is Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. You know what this is? Don't be discouraged. Now, you know what your problem is when you're seeking a loved one in your life? You're discouraged. And that's why you will rush into a wrong relationship. And then you already married the person where your life has problems and defects. I've seen people, uh, my dad told me this, the number one, there are two biggest problems in this church that I've seen wreck a person's life. It's work and relationship. You know why? Because people, they get discouraged being a Bible-believing, King James-only dispensational Christian. And because of that, they think that they're going to lose the person. So because of that, they compromise, they cut corners, and they rush ahead the will of God, and they get involved in a wrong relationship. Or they get so discouraged that they think that they're ugly, that they can never get anybody, I'm going to die a monk or something like that. <laughs> so you see, you, got, you can't be discouraged. If you get discouraged, you're not going to get the person because it makes you lose confidence as well. You've got to be encouraged in the Lord, realizing that if the relationship didn't work or if the relationship worked or if the odds are pretty much impossible for you to get the person, Lord's in charge. He's still on the throne. He will give you the person. So you've got to encourage yourself on that one. Another thing is, uh, let's look at the book of James. Let's look at the book of James. Chapter 4. James chapter 4. Another thing is that uh, you got to take advantage now. You got to take advantage now. Look at James chapter 4 and then verse 14. And then I'm going to turn to Matthew chapter, I believe it was 5. So I'm going to turn there real quick or chapter 6. All right, we're going to look at the book of James chapter 4. And notice right here that in James chapter 4 and verse 14, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then what? Dasheth away. Another thing you got to understand which people fail to think about is that life is very short, and it can be too late. So a lot of people, what they do is that um, they do nothing. They think some miracle is going to happen, and they don't take advantage themselves. Well, you got to realize that life is very short, and you got to take advantage before it's too late. See? That's what I do. You know what I do? I take advantage. I take advantage of the person's situation. And then, well, what if the person dumps you? What if it doesn't work out? Then on to the next person. All right, I got, I got 24 hours more. I got several more years of my life. But it's not going to work anything if I waste five years of my life not taking advantage of somebody. So before it's too late, you got to go out and go to that person and get that person. You got to go and then, uh, I don't know if there's someone in your life that you're interested in, take advantage of that. Now, please watch my previous video before you, you shoot your brains out, okay? My previous video mentioned the importance of using wisdom, making it natural, see? All right, don't just go over there and say something dumb and stupid and then on to the next man or the next woman after that, okay? So, but it is important that you take advantage of the situation. Come on, be smart, okay? I know of a Christian, all right, who is able to get a model. I'm not lying, okay, Bible-believing Christian. He's able to get a model, but how, the model obviously kept pushing the Christian away, but the Christian was so smart that he kept taking advantage, wouldn't let, the, let her go. So like, oh, it's not a date, it's just a just friend, you know. Well, I don't know, it's just a friend thing, okay. Well, I don't know, it's just eating out, what's wrong with that? Okay, and then so she went, and then eventually, more and more and more, she kept resisting, and it connected. So you got to understand this, is that um, 
um, you got to be, uh, you got to take advantage before it's too late. Uh, but you got to do it naturally, like in my previous video. You got to do it naturally. Don't be weird about it. And if it doesn't work out, hey, it doesn't work out. That's it. Now, the thing that is extremely important is that all of this comes down to God. And you, you notice that all of this root thing is in God? Don't be discouraged because God is with you with wherever you go. Remember, who's in charge of life? That's why life is too short. It's God. Uh, confidence. I can do all things through Christ. Pray to God. All of this comes down to God. And if you think about God, you're going to be patient for the right person and not rush ahead of time and do something dumb. And not only that, because you trust in God, you're not going to waste your time and take advantage of the situation. Now, you know what the book of Matthew says? The book of Matthew, it says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So you've got to seek and then you're going to find so I hope that these things will help you concerning your life as a single person. And if you, were to, if you were to do that, then you can't go wrong and God will be on the throne and still in control. One more thing I would like to close is this. I mentioned this in my previous video, so I want to say it in this one as well. Is that obviously it is very difficult to be a King James only dispensational Bible believing Christian. So you got to realize this. When you're dating the, the girl or the guy, you can't dump everything at once like that. When you do that, Obviously, the person did not have that in mind when the person started to date you or start to get affection of you. What you've got to do, the person, what they're seeking is an interest in you, some affection. And when you do that, then you slip in more and more. And then when you get to know the person more and where you're confident, then lay it all down more and more. And then when you know that the person is saved and then can become a Bible-believing Christian, then you can tie the knot in marriage after that. See? So, but you got to realize this, is that you can't dump it all on their lap. What the person wants, what everybody wants, Christian or non-Christian, is seeking affection from the person. Is seeking that kind of affection. That's what everyone is looking for. Do that, and then from there, then you win the person's trust. See? The person doesn't trust you at the first day. You win the person's affection and trust. And then when you tell them something, it's not like they're going to throw you away once they know what kind of person you are.